What do you do when the lockdown gets serious? There are actually army barricades around the roads out of Melbourne at the moment. And we're locked down for about six weeks. So we've got to look after our mental health. We've got to keep things together. We've got to stop from going totally Jack Torrens and chopping up the doors in the house kind of mad. Comfort movies are called for, so I have to find myself a comfort movie. Something something from my childhood, something that makes me feel warm in my tummy, something cool, something I could talk about on a YouTube video. I went looking in the back room and I looked around the shelves and I kept looking and I kind of went through a whole bunch of movies and then I realized that what I wanted was actually in the front room and I finally found it. By the way, the hat, um, I picked it up in an ice bar in Auckland on my honeymoon. But it's really warm and it's really snug. And I think it gives me a certain rakish, debonair look. You may disagree. So I found the movie. The movie that I wanted to watch. Based on a TV series from my childhood. And I found out I've got a bunch of different things from the movie in the household because that's how I roll. So the movie is Sid and Marty Crofts. Puff and Stuff the movie. Now, it's based on a TV series by a couple of guys called Sid and Marty Croft, oddly enough. And it's hard to explain HR Puff and Stuff the TV series, which is here, to people who didn't grow up with it, because it's basically pretty damn weird. A kid gets washed up on an island with a magic flute and meets a whole bunch of people in costumes <laughs> pretending to be dragons and animals. There's an evil witch who wants to get the flute for reasons of her own and I won't go into the Freudian implications of that. And it's deeply psychedelically weird. After the TV series ran its course, they decided to do a feature film. It is cool as One of the reasons it's cool is it's got Mama Cass from the Mamas and the Papas in it playing a witch. It's got some really cool songs and the songs are so ineffably cool that there's even a soundtrack album. Which of course I have a copy of. Um, I've got a lot of vinyl in the house. Uh, yeah, so puff and stuff. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna watch the movie and then I'm gonna try to explain it to you. Now, this may be difficult for anybody born after about 1965, but bear with me, just lean into it We'll get through it and I'll tell you why this is, for me at least, an incredibly wonderful comfort film. Eventually. So I watched Puff and Stuff and it was still fun. Ah, that's a lovely thing. I was a little bit worried that it wouldn't be. I was a little bit worried that I'd grown past the joys of childhood and the movies of childhood, but this one worked for me. And actually I haven't done what the movie's about, so I'll read it off the back of the cover for you. So bear with me while I do that. After a bad day at school, Jimmy, played by Jack Wilde, runs to the shore where he can play with his flute in solitude. <laughs> he can play his flute in solitude, which is not a euphemism. When he lays a flute down, it suddenly comes to love. And you were wrong about flutes. We can be lonesome too. Will you be my friend? Jimmy is lured aboard a magical talking boat sent by an evil witch named Witchy Pooh, played by Billy Hayes. Soon Jimmy uncovers the truth. He is to be made Witchy Pooh's prisoner and the flute now made of gold and diamonds studded will be hers. But the entire escapade is seen by a dragon called H.R. Puff and Stuff. When he and his friends Kling and Clang come to the rescue, Jimmy's adventures on Living Island, where everything is alive, is about to begin. Now Puff and Stuff and his friends have to get Jimmy to safety off the island before Witchy Pooh snags the flute to impress Boss Witch, played by Martha Ray, and her friend Witch Hazel, played by Mama Cass. That's pretty much it. So yeah, it's, it's a kid's movie, but it's got a lot going for it. A lot of the jokes are very dated and very topical for 1970 when the movie was made, but that doesn't really matter that much. The things I took away from it that really I really appreciated were, first off, the music by Charles Fox, with lyrics by Norman Gimbel from the album, and I'll put that so it doesn't reflect so much light. Um, are good, they're solid. Uh, Charles Fox did a whole bunch of different pieces of music and uh, particularly soundtracks in the 70s and 80s. 
He did the soundtrack to Barbarella, for instance. He did this one. He also did things like the Green Slime. I'm just reading this here. Um, the Laughing Policeman, The Last American Hero. He also wrote the theme to The Love Boat. So, <laughs> Charles Fox, who's still around, he was born in 1940, but he's still around, um, really does have some interesting pop cultural credit there. And the songs are good. There's a really good production number with Mama Cass Elliot singing a song called Different, which is very topical. Now, it's about finding out that you're different from other people and accepting it and finding allies and finding friends. It really is a song that kind of goes beyond the original context and could be covered again by a modern artist with a very different kind of emphasis. When I was smaller and people were taller, I realized that I was different. It's just a lot of fun. The, um, the big thing I took away from it, there's three things I took away from it. The first one was the production design is fantastic. There is incredible detail in the set design and also the costume design for the characters. But if you have a look closely, the things like um, Wichi Poo's chair in her castle, the castle design itself, the design of the living island town, the design of the vehicles that are in the movie, and also the incredible costume design for all the witches really is next level stuff. It just seeing it on a big screen and seeing all of that detail and watching for the detail is great. And you've got to remember this isn't a time when you could 3D print or even fabricate it easily a lot of the pieces for this, these particular sets. They are very much bespoke items and it works so well. The colours are bright and vivid and well chosen too. The colour design in this is great. The actors are good too. Uh, there are a whole bunch of short statured actors, people like Felix Silla, Billy Barty's in there, Angelo Rosito and a bunch of others wearing the costumes for a lot of the characters and they get to do a lot of stuff. They, there's some wire work they have to do. There's also costumes where you can, we have a limited field of vision and still dancing and doing all of the kind of pratfalls and stunts gives a lot of credit to those guys. And the female characters are very strong in this one too. Witchy Poo played by Billy Hayes, who really made it big on Broadway in the late 1950s, playing Mammy Yoakum in the musical Little Abner. She really gives it all. She's larger than life and overplaced the way a witch should be. She gets some of the best line right at the start of the movie. She even breaks the fourth wall to address the audience and does it at the end as well. Shh! Be quiet! Wow! Stop eating your popcorn and be quiet! So that's all kind of fun and uh, she's really one of the most valuable players in this one. Uh, you also then have Martha Ray who have been in movies since the 1940s playing Boss Witch and she knows what kind of movie it is. She plays to the level of the movie wonderfully. If you haven't seen it, you should check out the Olsen and Johnson movie Hills Are Poppin' because Martha Ray has a major role in that and does some incredible things. And that's in the 1940s. And here she is in 1970 playing uh, a broad character which then got her a role in a further uh, Sid Marty Croft TV series a couple of years later, so she was really great. Mama Cass is fantastic in there. I think this may be one of the only movie roles she did. Uh, Cass Elliot, of course, being part of the 1960s group, The Mamas and the Papas. And her production number of different is just really top stuff. Jack Wilde, who plays Jimmy the Young Boy, uh, child actor, he was in Oliver as well with Mark Lester in 1968, I think it is really famous movie musical, of which I'm not particularly fond. But Jack Wilde unfortunately had um, some tragedy in his life. He was an alcoholic by the age of 21. And then due to his alcoholism and his inability to work and, and other things, uh, he was wracked with cancer for a lot of his life and died at the age of 53. Child actors often have tragic lives, unfortunately, uh, due to emotional and physical abuse in their young years. And the transition from being a star to not being a star uh, is something that a lot of them have a lot of trouble with. The other thing I mentioned too, in a totally different note, is that Freddie the Magical Flute is the progenitor and the original influence of a very 
famous South Park character, of course, being Mr. Hanky the Christmas Pooh. Very similar characters and with very similar voice. So obviously, Trey Parker and Matt Stowe were fans of Puff and stuff in his various iterations. So did the movie work as a comfort during these kind of rough times for me? Yeah, it did. It was fun to watch it. It was fun to just immerse myself in it. At the start, I started getting a little too analytical while I was watching it. And then I backed off from that and thought, no, I'm going to watch it just as an audience member and not get analytical about it and think about it later, but just be in the moment and enjoy the movie. And it worked for me. It really is a comfort film for me. And I think that anything we can use to get us through these unusual times is a good thing. Apart from, you know, drugs, sexual addiction and um, gambling and alcohol. I'd say that anything non-damaging that gets you through these times is a good thing. So I recommend you see it. If you saw it as a child, you probably should revisit it. If you hadn't seen it as a child and you're from later generations, give it a go. Uh, maybe just sit down, let it be a kid's film from the 1970s. Try not to overanalyze it and just go for the ride of this film. It's, um, there are bits of it you're not going to like, but for the most part, it has an open heart. It's got some really good music in it, way above what you'd expect from a lot of similar product at the time. So that's it this time around. I had a lot of fun watching this movie. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know what your childhood comfort films are and how re-watching them affects you as well because that is a big, very different thing. We watch things differently as adults as, than we do as children. And slipping back into that childhood mindset is a skill that we really should cultivate. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to, please subscribe and leave a comment and hit the notification bell. I'll be back soon with something very different. I think I might have a World War II movie that a lot of people haven't seen, which has some interesting things about it. But anyway, in the meantime, watch good movies, watch bad movies, watch movies that you treasured as a child, and I'll see you next time.